Welcome everybody to this fourth PCB Investigator physics simulation tutorial where I want to show you how a heat sink can improve the thermal behavior of our board. First I will load again our simulation example and we still have the additional drills and the changed copper on bottom layer from our tutorial number three. This change in, in the copper area and these additional drills already improved our thermal behavior in that way that from 142 degrees we got down to 115 degrees on our U1 component which is our hotspot. What I now will do is I will add a heat sink onto our U1 component as it is already shown here in the 3D so we have a large heatsink on our component with about 15 fines and I want to simulate the board now including this heatsink. Therefore I go again into the physics menu and start the simulation here. So we now do the tutorial number four. Voltage drop I will include. For board there's no change. The currents are also the same. Only in the power tab I'm looking for the U1 component which has a power loss of four watt. And here we have the possibility to add a heatsink. Adding the heatsink needs you to know the thermal resistance of your heatsink. Therefore I found a very nice web page from MHS where the thermal resistance can be calculated. I will now enter the parameters of our heatsink. So the width is 10 millimeters, length is 15, the height is 5 millimeters, where the board thickness is 1.5 and the fine thickness is 0 0.25 and we have 15 fines. The thermal resistance calculator now gives me a value um, depending on the airflow rate. So I assume that we have 0 0.5 meters per second and then we have a thermal resistance of 30.8 Kelvin per watt. This value I will now enter. So we enter a thermal resistance of 30.8. Okay. So with the simulation, the U1 now gets a heatsink with 30.8 Kelvin per watt thermal resistant. The environment still is the same, so we can start the simulation. Okay, let's look at the result. So I activate the temperature overlay and we now already see that the temperature goes down to approximately 7.79 degrees. So when I again load our already saved notes from the first tutorial and then again update the text and of course also adopt the color range to the result we had in our first tutorial 142.6 and we see that the temperature on the top layer has only about 78 degrees which is about 60 degrees less than at tutorial number one and about 35 degrees less than in tutorial number three when we look at the bottom side we see 72 degrees, which is also around about 35 degrees less than in tutorial number three. So I will again do the PDF printout. So 
we print it into tutorial number four PDF and again one page per layer and we see that 79 degrees on the component top side 78 on the copper layer on the top side and 73 roundabout on the copper layer on the bottom side. So we had really large degrees in temperature by adding the heat sink. This can be also shown in our 3D model. So compared, so the colors are comparable with the tutorial number one. So we see that the heat, there's nearly no heat anymore, no red areas. So we are much cooler than in tutorial number one. So as a result we can say that adding this heat sink brought the largest decrease in temperature from all tutorials until now. Compared to the first example, to the first tutorial, we are around about 60 degrees cooler and compared to the third example with the copper layout change, we are still have an increase in degrees of about 37 degrees. So thanks for watching and in the next tutorial I want to show the effect of a cooling aluminium plate on the bottom side. So watch out for tutorial number 5. Thanks.